We're at the Jacobs Center in Yavo of Ukraine. And we're going to find out what this Project 25 is about. <laughs> hey, Tony. Nice to meet you. Yes. Hi. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Welcome. Uh, yeah, we're down here just to find out what this Project 25 is all about. Maybe you could explain it to me. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Project 25 uh, was a, a pilot project uh, put together by the United Way to uh, look at San Diego's most uh, expensive uh, people who are experiencing homelessness and to, uh, using a housing first approach, uh, find those folks, uh, put them into supportive housing, um, and then track their uh, use of public services over time. So uh, it was a partnership uh, with the United Way, uh, the city, the San Diego Housing Commission, uh, and the county of San Diego uh, to really, uh, you know, demonstrate locally here that uh, it, it it does essentially cost more to do nothing as far as homelessness goes. You know, the results of Project 25 are, are pretty uh, incredible. Um, I, I think when I tell people that you know, 28 people uh, cost San Diego 3.5 uh, million dollars in one year. Yeah. You know, so think about that: a a group of 28 people, yeah. 3.5 million dollars. Uh, and, and most of that, if you can look up here, um, you can see where that, that money is coming from. Um, you know, this big red piece of the pie right here, that, that's health care costs, that's hospitals, that's, that's emergency rooms, that's uh, inpatient days. Uh, but there's also some other, uh, you know, sizable chunks. Um, 911 costs, uh, you know, jails, things like that. So Project 25, th those 28 people, those were like the tip of the pyramid as far as expensive people in, uh, on the streets. For me, what Project 25 really did was, um, I drank the Kool-Aid for Housing First, um, and, I, and I've, I saw that, you know, if if a program could target these people, you know, folks that um, most uh, folks would say they they can't be helped, they can't be, you know, n nothing's going to work for this fo for the, this this group, and we can get their costs down to here. And I was part of this project, and I, and I saw people that I, I saw back in 2011 say, there's no way we're going to make an impact with this guy. And to see this guy in his apartment three years later, you know, inviting me in for ice cream um, it was pretty phenomenal. So I think you know, it, it really made me as a person uh, kind of believe wholeheartedly in, in this approach at Housing First um, and making sure our, our programs are low barrier and they're accepting people regardless of um, you know, what they're willing to do or, or what uh, their goals. It, it makes me optimistic that if we can end homelessness for this group, yeah. for the, uh, the toughest, then we can end homelessness for anybody yeah. uh, in San Diego uh, with just making sure that we have the right mix of services because Project 25 was a pretty different approach to homelessness and we're doing things that probably other programs weren't able to do. But so as, as long as we have the right mix of services that we can attach to the right people, based on their need, um, then we can really do something here uh, in town. Um, so, so Project 25, again, well, that was like the tip of the pyramid of cost. We used data, we used hospital data, jail data to really identify the people before they were even enrolled. So we knew they were expensive before we even found them. Um, and so uh, the Registry Week project uh, was a little bit different. So Registry Week was part of the National 100,000 Homes Initiative. In a week in the fall of 2010, they went out and surveyed the downtown population um, using an a, a, a assessment tool called the Vulnerability Index um, and to identify your most vulnerable uh, homeless folks in, in the downtown area. And so they prioritized the most vulnerable. They did the same thing as Project 25 as far as providing su supportive housing. Um, again, it was a partnership between city, county, uh, and the VA. There's a lot of uh, veterans in this project. We also did the same thing as, as uh, track their costs um, over time, and so using the same metrics um, as Project 25, the same uh, university, uh, Point Loma Nazarene, uh, they did both studies. Um, and so, but what we found is in this study, so we, we, found, we found 114 individuals. Um, they didn't cost as much. They weren't like the Project 25, they, but they still, uh, 114 people cost $1.2 million in a 12-month period. You can see uh, where the costs land um, still good chunk of that is healthcare costs, so hospitalizations, um, emergency rooms, you know, ambulance, uh, things like that, uh, but, but jail as well. Um, but also we can see as, as the, 
you know, as the, as the folks stayed in housing longer, right, um, their costs went down. So um, now I think the interesting part of this study was there wasn't necessarily net, net savings um, because, you know, the actual cost of providing housing and services um, was, was essentially more than what uh, the savings were. However, that wasn't ever the goal of this project. This, you know, Project 25 was to demonstrate cost savings. This project was to take San Diego's most vulnerable, take them off the streets, and put them into housing and, and improve their quality of life. But even if you look at uh, 114 individuals who are most vulnerable in downtown, um, you can see, these. so this is the cost of those 114 people. Now, look, 74 of those people, of that 114, so a pretty good chunk, had relatively little costs. They, they, you know, had, they didn't hit the ERs that much, you know, maybe once or twice. Maybe they got arrested one, one, you know, once. But they weren't very expensive people compared to the, you know, the 28 people. However, as you kind of go down, there were a cohort of that 114 most vulnerable who did end up being pretty costly. When, when these people got houses, were they looked after in the houses or just given housing, period? No, no. I, I, so I think uh, one thing, we, housing first uh, is not housing only, right? So it's, it's housing first, uh, yeah. uh, and then the goal is to you know, provide the right wraparound care to, to support that person once they're in housing. Do you think that um, if you were to just give them housing, these cops would be the same? You know, I, I, I think for cohorts like this in Project 25, as well as registry week, I think housing alone would uh, would not would not have worked. Um, I, I think for um, when you look at you know a large segment of the homeless population, sure. I, I think you know if we could provide initial housing um, and help them get into housing, I think you're going to have a lot of success. But I think uh, for folks in both these projects, um, you know, I think folks that have uh, you know kind of high needs, they're, they're going to need. Uh, not just housing, they're going to need uh, folks to be in their life, um, you know, to help them kind of manage, uh, manage their housing, be, be stable in their housing, you know, and, and I don't think that has to be forever, you know, I, I think there's, you know, even we look at Project 25, that some of the folks that were, um, you know, some of the hardest to reach, you know, this was, we started this in 2011, you know, it's 2017 now, and, and, and there's, a, there's a good chunk of those folks that are doing really well. Um, and they really need minimal supports at this point in their life, but they needed, you know, maybe two to three years of pretty intense, uh, intense support. And, and now they're, you know, they might be uh, getting their support from other community-based networks. You know, they're maybe they're they're using their church as, as their support system, and and you know they're not relying on, you know, uh, case managers or, or such. So, were these people that were in the high-risk group? Were they? Uh, do they have medical problems, uh, mental issues only, or, or are there other things? Yeah, so good, good question. So um, what we found in, in Project 25 is that, uh, you know, almost 100% of them had, you know, uh, severe mental illness and or substance abuse disorder. Um, about 80% had a, a pretty significant uh, health uh, medical issue. Um, and a lot of them had all three. Um, so uh, we, we saw people with some pretty severe cognitive you know, impairments from just kind of a, a long-term exposure to the streets and, and, and to, to a lifestyle, right? So um, yeah, you know, for a long time, uh, we put a lot of uh, emphasis on the homeless system of fixing all the problems, right? And so the homeless system has always been the safety net where if there's a crack in, you know, the education system, if there's a crack in the criminal justice system, or if there's a crack in the healthcare system, if people fell through the cracks, the homeless system was always that safety net, right? And so uh, we expected the homeless system to, you know, address all those issues that were coming, you know, kind of stemming from probably other structures. So, you know, in a lot of ways, the homeless system alone can't fix those things, um, nor should we be asked to fix those things. I mean, the homeless system really needs to act as a, a system that can help people re-enter housing as quickly as possible. So I, I've heard uh, some people talk about how can you make your homeless system like a trampoline, you know? So as people fall through the cracks and enter into homelessness, right, our system can be super quick and bounce people right back it up, bounce people right back into, you know, housing. And then we need to work with all these other mainstream systems 
um, to then support that person in the community. But again, the homeless system can't be that, that place where we got to fix everything. The homeless system really needs to focus on quick access to housing.